Hey there, Boots on here. I've got a interesting fellow here. I reckon it's interesting. It's the red signal head from a Siemens traffic light. There's a part number. It has a bright and a dim setting, 230 volts, 150 volts, and draws a relatively low wattage because it's an LED unit. Now I've played with these before. I will tell you where I got it from first. So in the past, when I was a kid growing up, if a car ever crashes into a traffic light, it tends to shatter it into loads of bits. And you can see, not on this one, actually, I think this one has some damage. But this one here is a yellow signal head, a uh, traffic light. It's all broken around here. So the clips that hold the, the bulb, this is effectively the bulb or the luminaire or the lamp or whatever you want to call it. The clips that hold them in place are broken on that yellow one. Sometimes they put them together, sometimes they don't. But sometimes whoever crashes into them, when the police leave, they just leave this mess on the road. And so if you pick them up, well, good luck to you. So these were found by somebody who then passed them on to me, knowing that I would like to play with them. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're broken. This is a thing called a safety block. There's too much stuff. There's too much stuff on my bench. This is a safety block. And what it does is it's like a way of wiring things without having a plug put the wires in there and you see those guillotines there a fused one for live and a one for neutral so there's no power here except for the earth until you close the lid this should light up now it does with a red light which the camera doesn't really capture but if i put that fresnel lens on it and then tilt it you can see the bulbs actually quite differently in the camera the camera does all sorts of weird things to this that doesn't happen wow okay <laughs> it's almost worth it just for the fun of playing with this so you can see how the beams of light are coming out there now i haven't got the fresnel lens properly in uh, that's it in so it's still doing that weird thing yeah looking into it with your eye is a bad idea but looking oh dear looking at the camera is not so bad so let's get that lens out and then on the front of it there'd be this thing here which is a uh, an anti-reflector i think so it's got this black let's turn that off it's got this black pattern printed on it and that corresponds to these uh dimples if you want to call them that so there's a thing called total internal reflection where light goes in turns hits the prisms on the back and comes back out again and they've eliminated eliminated that by applying this black pattern with a matte finish so when the car headlight when the car headlight strikes the lens it doesn't reflect back it's an anti-reflective lens is what this is uh, this is a focusing fresnel lens which is basically like a magnifying glass but it's what they use in lighthouses and stuff like that to spread out a beam so you take a point beam and you spread it out without using a big chrome reflector uh, and then this stops the anti-reflection stuff it, it creates anti-reflection the older lights i haven't got one to hand i think i have one out in the shed somewhere i thought i had one i don't have one to hand the older ones had a halogen lamp i think 12 volt with a transformer in the box in this unit with a chrome reflector to shine the light forward that's performing the function of the fresnel lens here and then the color because it was just a standard you know white or yellow um bulb the colour was provided by the lens, so it was an anti-reflective coloured filter at that point. Uh, it had the black finish on it. And you'll notice if you look at uh, pedestrian crossing ones where there's like a red man or a green man, the, the red still has the anti-reflective, but maybe not as much because it's not expected to have car headlamps pointing at it. I can't remember if it does or not, but all they do is they just paint the rest of it black. So there's no detail in the LEDs or anything. The LEDs just put out light. So we've checked that it works. Then I want to check how low I can dim it on a Variac. So this is a Variac. It's a variable auto transformer. So it takes AC from the mains through this wire, this wire and then puts it out at whatever voltage you select between zero and 270 volts. Uh, through what I've now through a plug here that I've plugged in on the side which is the safety block down here so let's turn on the safety block and that's it at zero volts let's just bring it up and see what voltage the circuitry kicks in at that's a hundred volts pretty much so, so it doesn't like going below but at a hundred it's quite happy it, it, when I turned it up it came on at a hundred it'll go back down again no it's not going back down again so there uh, it's got one setting, 100 up to nearly, we're nearly at 200 now. 
and then it comes on to another setting. So it has some kind of regulation there for dim and bright, which is daytime and nighttime setting for the light. That's good to know. Right, so what did I want to do then was I wanted to check with a multimeter before it gets a bit spicy. I wanted to check, let's disconnect it for now while I'm playing with this. I wanted to check the outputs on this board here. So on the circuitry here, it's disconnected. You've got LED negative on the right, LED positive, and then sense, and then a fourth wire with no label. So I think if I can get my probe on LED negative and LED positive just to see what's coming out of it. Let's get it up to 100 to begin with. Turn on the multimeter to try AC voltage. I, no, I tried DC voltage. I suspect it's DC. It's an auto ranging multimeter, so it should be able to figure out, well, it will be able to figure out the voltage. And I'm getting an output of 13 volts DC. And let's crank it up to the brighter setting. God, I can't see anything now. So we're getting about 18 or 19, 18 and a half volts DC there. So I wonder if I could just set it up to run on 18 volts. I'll try it on 12 maybe, if I get a battery. I don't have a bench power supply, do I? Yeah, I can put it on the bench power supply and give that a go. So I'm pretty sure that this fellow here came from a dustbin. I don't have any great confidence that we're going to have success with it. Let's get a cable on each. Got some nice probes though I found. <laughs> find most of my treasure because well it's all out there to be taken and if you want to buy stuff like this a bench power supply doesn't come cheap so if you can find a bench power supply you can find some banana cables somewhere and you can find things then you're getting away without paying for it right let's hook this one on here it's an interesting circuit board because it has space for loads of resistors that aren't present and that must be something to do with how you configure it dialyte garufo I can see about 10 little resistors and it's set on a heat sink so they're all surface mounted and then that sits on the metal back yes yeah, so that's it with 15 volt clearly working okay let's bring it down to 12 because I can run a battery at 12 quite comfortably yeah so 12 at 12 you're not going to get much out of it it's interesting 13 volts you're getting something let's max that up to 15 at 15 it's a real light swap the range for 30 volts we're up to 30 what was it running up before 20 something let's put it back to 20 see how we're going there so now we're at 20 volts that's more like it and then well 24 25 24 It's also it's also quite bright. So I think we could do a bit of damage like that. The other one is sense and something else. I can't it doesn't seem to say what it is. The sensor is probably something to do. Well I don't know, I don't see a sensor in there. So I don't know what that's about. So I can run it at let's try it at twelve again. And it's it's pretty poor. I don't think my multimeter likes that. So that's it at 12. So running it off a standard lead battery wouldn't be great. Standard 12 volt lead battery. But something like 18 volts there, like a drill battery. That's given the desired effect. And with the Fresnel lens, you see, you've been wondering where I've been going with this the whole time. This is for a bicycle light <laughs> to replace or to add a bicycle light to a bicycle. That's pretty good. 25 is probably better. So if you could have some kind of a DC dimmer, which I think I actually have DC uh, motor speed controllers, which should do for this, no bother. That would work quite well. So then, in that spirit, let's gut all of this stuff out of here, because none of that is necessary anymore. So I clearly don't need a signal head, red, amber, green, for anything. So 
So now I've stripped the guts out of it and I've got a positive and a negative cable and that's me ready to go I reckon. Just need to solder on some wires and get it to a power supply or a battery or something. And I suspect a vacuum cleaner battery is the way to go with that because they tend to run at those higher voltages. So a 22 volt vacuum cleaner battery, which I may have out in the garage. So that would be super.